Folks at home, welcome back to the Backyard Bass Pond, and a lot happened this past week that we got to get you all caught up on. But first, in case you missed the last video, we had five baby turtle eggs that hatched. We're going to be naming them later on in this video. Liz and I also were down in Orlando this past week at ICAST. We're going to show you some of the highlights from that trip later. But before we get into any of that, we had a fish emergency out here. I came out here to check the water temp, and it was over 90 degrees. So a lot of bad things can happen whenever you get temperatures that high. Your dissolved oxygen will get really low. You can have every fish in your pond die in just a matter of days. So I saw something in Costco the other day that I think may help out. A giant solar-powered umbrella. Let's go get it. All right, folks, here it is. The 11-foot solar powered umbrella i just spent 500 bucks so my bass could have some shade but hey that's just a drop in the bucket if you look at what i've spent on the past couple years keeping them alive but looks pretty cool rotates 360 degrees it's powered by the sunshine we can ramp it up ramp it down it's got lights built into it it seems like a pretty cool deal oh this is one beast of an umbrella while we're getting everything set up liz is over here reading the manual on how to put it together let's talk a little bit of strategy so the sun rises in this area and we have a lot of trees as it's coming up when it gets to its highest point in the sky that's when we have problems from there to there so i think the best spot to put it is going to be over here on this rock pile we just put the base over here might have to flatten it out a little bit but i'm thinking that's going to be the best spot to put it facing back this way to protect from the sun over there and it requires 200 pounds of sand that go in these things all right let's see what it looks like steven's standing on it because we haven't filled it with sand yet Ooh, nice <laughs> thing's huge all right now can you make it tilt over Oh. We're going to go in with some bigger golden shiners because we've been getting them these small thousand count golden shiners and literally these fish can eat a thousand shiners in two weeks. That's including the catfish, the turtle, the crappie, and sheriff. So we got some heavy hitters in this backyard pond. So I'm getting a new delivery of a bigger style golden shiner first thing in the morning. I haven't even gotten to have my coffee this morning. You guys have already delivered live fish. So I gotta take them outside and get them acclimated in the pond. So that's the new size. Last scoop I think I'm going to put in here. A couple of dead ones with the catfish will eat them, no problem. I actually saw Bonnie eat a dead one yesterday that I'd thrown in from the minnow tank. It was up on top water. We missed it. So I haven't shown these underwater cameras on this channel in a while, so let's give everybody an update. Our pet turtle ranger is definitely the happiest whenever we restock the golden shiners. He chases them around all day long. And if you want to see these underwater shots more often, we created a second channel, Bama Bass Pond, that we have a 24-7 live stream with two different cameras. And you can stay updated on all of our pets. But the guy who's getting the most out of these golden shiners, I think, is the Catfish Shadow. So he used to only come out at night. You wouldn't see him that often. But now he eats heavy at night. He's a bottom feeder, but he'll also chase the shiners around a good bit. We're starting to see him more and more throughout the day. But something I found really interesting is that now that he's gotten bigger, him and the bass are kind of having some turf wars. Sometimes he'll chase after some of the bass, and sometimes the bass will chase after him. But it hadn't become a problem yet because they're roughly both the same size. But if the catfish starts getting a lot bigger, we may end up having to pull him out of the pond. And one other interesting thing to note, several months ago, I was feeding our bass these baby bluegills, and some of them survived, and now we're starting to see them more and more. They were hiding in the cracks, 
and you'd see them come out every now and again but now i'm starting to see them on the cameras and even during the daytime i think now that they've gotten big enough to where the bass can't eat them or don't mess with them they're starting to come out more and more i know for a fact there's two and i'm kind of thinking that there's a third one as well So I'm going to show some highlights from our trip to ICAST down in Orlando, but we're staying at the Animal Kingdom Lodge, and if you guys love outdoors like I do, I highly suggest staying there because you can see an unbelievable amount of animals from the balcony of your room. And my favorite was this bird that looks kind of like a turkey, but it has an afro, and we'd see those every morning, but you can also see zebras, giraffes, basically anything you'd see in an African safari. Liz finally caught her PP. That's a big end. Now, I usually don't do much filming in ICAST because we're there to kind of decide what lures we're going to stock at our tackle shop, Bama Frogs. But there was one company that I was extremely impressed with out of Australia. And probably my top three favorite new lures that I saw all came from this one company. The first was a frog. We've seen these lifelike frogs in the past, but their color patterns and the action that it had in the water definitely got me fired up and ready to fish it. So they had a really good looking frog. They also had a crawfish bait that was very unique. I've never seen one quite like this. There's a lot of crawfish baits out there, but it had really good underwater action. And one of the coolest things they did is the jig head that you fish it with, they made it look like crawfish eggs. So this thing is completely realistic from the top side as well as the bottom side. They also had a couple other cool and funny lures. One of them was a parrot. It looks like a topwater parrot that's similar to a pompadour. And then they also had a swim bait that I, I'm going to be interested to fish. It's got an inline spinner in it, and I'll let him explain it. So it's a slow sinking two segment swim bait with the prop. <laughs> so what it, does that put off bubbles, sound? What does it do? In, uh, the main thing, it gives contrast. It gives off a bit of flash water movement. Yeah. It makes the lure look alive. Yeah. And it's just another different presentation. Can we see that in there as well? So it's slow sinking. Yeah, I see it spinning. Very nice. But we will be selling these lures at our tackle shop, BamaFrogs.com. You'll be able to place a pre-order next week, and they should be in in September or October. So we were gone all last week, so I hadn't had a chance to build the turtle pond yet. But let's check in on the babies. Everybody's still doing good. We had some pet sitters come along, and they fed them every day. We'd take them out and put them in those little containers. They definitely like to hide in this little green bush. You can see all the other four are hiding in there right now. But one of you guys commented that we should take all of the plastic plants out of there because they'll try to eat them. So I'm going to try to come up with another solution for them to hide. That's not a plastic plant. Definitely don't want them eating that plastic. But I'm going to take them out of this tank, do a little feeding, and then we'll try to name them. All right, let's check them out now that we can see them all. Their colors are starting to come along really nice. You can see the little patterns that are developing as well as those humps on the top of their shell. We're starting to think that they're a yellow belly slider. We're still not 100% sure on that. They still could be a Cumberland slider. I don't think they're a red ear slider because there's no hint of red yet. But now let's talk about the names. So had a ton of comments in the comment section about naming these the Ninja Turtles. And one of the comments that got the most likes in the last video said name them after the Ninja Turtles and name the fifth one Splinter. Liz liked that idea. I'm good with it. So Four of these are going to be the Ninja Turtles, and then the other one is going to be Splinter. It's pretty cool to have our own little pizza-eating Ninja Turtles. But just to show you guys how small they are, I mean, they are tiny. Look at how small these little guys are. So, Ronald Patton, you're the winner of this contest. Send me your address, I'll send you out a prize package. And a couple weeks ago, we caught some of the smallest toads I've ever seen out of our pond. And I was reading through some of the comments on that video, and Ian Gonzalez said, name one of the toads Bud and the other one Wiser. And that made me laugh because whenever I was a kid, during the Super Bowl, they used to have these Bud Wiser frogs, and I had to go back and get a clip of it. But there were three frogs, Bud, Wise, and Er. So, I think I'm going to name these two Bud and Wise, and I'm going to see if I can catch a third one and name it Er. So Ian, send me over your address and I'll send you out a prize package. All right, now it's time to see if our big umbrella has helped at all. So I got a thermostat here. You can see that it's 90 degrees. Outside temp. Let's check this water temp. There's one of those bluegills I was telling you about. Right there. Yeah. All right, let's test out this water temp. I'm gonna do it right there at the surface because that's where I measured it the other day. 
give it just a second it's already showing 84 I have a feeling it'll probably drop a little bit lower yeah it's dropping now here's that little bluegill I was telling you about just swimming around right in front of Bonnie doesn't seem to mind at all not scared out just trying to catch a minnow all right it looks like it's still dropping but we're around 81 80 degrees so we did have hurricane Barry just come through uh oh Bonnie might nip at the bluegill this is interesting yep back to hiding I don't blame anybody but we did just have Hurricane Barry come through and dump a ton of water in here. I'm sure that cooled off the pond a good bit. But either way, I think that this umbrella is going to give them some nice shade. But that's going to wrap up this video. Leave some comments down below on what you think we ought to do with our new turtle pond. Hope you all enjoyed it. and see you all next time. Children